Hello, let's do some examples from a table given some information. So let's see if I can get this right. So to kick it off here, uh, we should have learned in the last video the different types of costs. So here's a firm popular around uh, southern Arizona and, and beyond. I think it's a Phoenix-based company uh, before they got bought out by Chuck E. Cheese. Anyway, so in your notes, I suggest to write down three examples of fixed costs for this firm, three examples of variable costs. And then the, another good question is on the revenue side, what, what are some ways that the firm could increase its total revenue? I suggest you pause the video for a second and do that. Then I'll go over some answers. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully you pause the video. Hopefully you're not cheating. It's going to pay off later on in the final exam and whatnot in your business career. So fixed costs are things that aren't going to change. So any video game uh, machine itself, not running the machine, uh, a bigger sign, uh, painting something on the outside of the window, uh, a cash register, the freezer, the soda machine, uh, all of those are, are capital goods and those are all fixed costs. Variable costs going to be the cheese, any pizza ingredients, the dough, a number of employees, electricity, so the number of hours you're open, you can change the variable cost. Um, that's pretty much it. And I forgot on fixed costs, you know, other examples are going to be insurance, managers, um, and advertising. Advertising actually is a fixed cost because it doesn't matter how much you sell, you still outlaid that uh, that price for the commercials. Uh, how could this firm increase its total revenue? Well, you could sell more pizza or more products, right? If they say they get salads and other stuff there. Um, so more, more, bring in more money, more ways to do that, increase the quantity or increase the prices. Okay. And so you think back to what kind of demand do they have elastic or inelastic demand? And, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to get data on something like this, right? Could they get away with a 5% increase and would that increase total revenue, right? And would the consumer even notice? I mean, I'm not really sure 5% is going to be on the radar of many people planning birthday parties or whatever. So, all right, well, we may be uh, confronted with something like this and I'm going to see, I think I got my pen back here. Oh, I do. But here's the thing. I In testing that, I there we go. What happens if I go back to this? And then I'm going to write right up here. Oh, good. Okay, so we've got a problem here. We've got, we sell widgets for $5 each. Okay, so this is the price. And remember, our total revenue is how many widgets I sell times, uh, in this case, going to be $5. Okay, it's a really uh, Q times P, right? But um, anyway, we know what the price is. All right, we've got some quantity over here, uh, down here. We'll get to in a second. Uh, how many should we produce? And the rent is going to be $20, right? Now, a bad business person is going to say, well, we should produce as many as we can, right? Uh, that type of thinking is just going to have long-term consequences, right? So you can be smarter about your business, uh, learn what you're uh, learning, in, or you apply what you're learning in this class, and uh, it'll get you get you pretty far there. Okay, so so we only have one fixed cost, and so rent is a fixed cost. So we're going to say if we make one widget, it's going to cost us twenty dollars in fixed costs. This going to change, right? Uh, and then we'll just add fixed cost plus variable cost because that is what total cost is. It's fixed cost plus variable cost. You may see this called total variable cost or total fixed cost. It means the same thing. It's not. It depends on who's writing the question. Um, so 20 plus 7 is 27. Okay. And if we go back to uh, back to zero, if I produced zero widgets, uh, I wouldn't have any variable cost, but I would have uh, 20 fixed costs. So the additional cost of that first widget is really just the additional variable cost. So it's going to be 7. Okay. Now I can do the uh, fixed cost pretty easily because I know it doesn't change. So when I produce two units, it's going to be 20. Three units is 20, four units is 20, so on and so forth. It's always 20. Okay, so it just doesn't matter. Um, then the variable costs, you know, I've, I've given you these here. You may be uh, told to write some kind of formula in Excel or something like that. I'll show you that later. But um, 20 plus 13 is 33. I'm just going to go through these pretty quick. Uh, 36, 38, 42, 46. 57, oh, that's interesting, and 66, okay. So now I want to do the marginal cost. So for some students, they find it easier to take this number and subtract from that number. Um, what I like to do is because, um, 
and just pay attention to the quantity. The quantity is going to be changed by by one, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter on the denominator side. Um, what I'm going to do is because marginal means additional. I'm going to say to myself, what is the additional cost associated with producing that second unit? And so it's additional cost from here to here. Now, this if you use this column, you'll get the same answer because fixed costs don't change. Okay, and because they don't change. They don't really matter in terms of management decision making like other other costs, right? The costs I can do something about in the short run. So, whatever. All right, there's six, uh, three, two, four, four, five, uh, six, and nine. Okay, so I have um, widgets sell for five dollars, and I want to profit maximize. I want to make a profit, right? So the first widget is going to cost me seven dollars and I have to decide you know I make some profits down here should I uh, go into this business right and, and like a lot of businesses the first couple of hours or the first couple of years they don't make they don't make a profit they have to they have to be in business for a while once you get down to here so I'm gonna make the decision that yes I'm gonna be in this business so um, so for this example here um, you know I'm gonna I'm, I, sh I am gonna make this one however I am gonna lose two dollars on it right now in the next example, um, it's going to cost me six dollars. I'm going to sell it for five. I'm I'm going to do it because I know there's profits down here because I already looked at the table. But I'm going to lose one there. Okay. Now here we go. After the third widget is produced, third widget only cost me three dollars. Okay. Now I'm getting into some cheaper production here, uh, and I'm going to produce this one because I'm going to sell it. Make kind of a weird face there. I'm trying to draw a happy face. It doesn't look right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to sell it for five dollars, and I, it cost me three to make. Okay, and this is going to be plus two. This one, I'm going to make it. Okay, it's cost me two dollars. I'm going to sell it for five plus three. Already, um, I've broken even at the margin. I don't know why that mark comes up there. Oh, did it again? Well, it's three. Okay, there. Um, okay, so now I'm at. I'm at plus five in profits, and then uh, I've only spent three, so I'm, I'm already up two, so this is good. Now this this one cost me four. Uh, I get to uh, sell it for five. I'm going to do this one. Cost me four. I'm going to sell it for five. I'm going to do this one. This one cost me five. I'm going to sell it for five. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Uh, for tax purposes, I might back off on this one. This is the one I'm going to break even on, right? So zero plus one plus one. Now this guy, it's going to cost me six dollars and I'm only going to sell it for five. And if you look, uh, we've hit diminishing marginal returns after this point, right? The, the marginal costs seem to be getting increasingly large. So in this one I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to stop. Okay, because this one's going to cost me more. I'm going to lose money. And I know that this last one is going to cost me nine and I'm only going to sell it for five. So it's going to be I'm, I'm going to lose four more dollars, right? So this is, this is how to think on the margin through my production, right? It's, I know it's a little abstract, uh, but if you think about a firm, eventually they, they shut down and go home, right? There's very few firms that are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? Walmart is an example, perhaps, but there really aren't very many that are always open, right? Uh, maybe Netflix that has a different sort of uh, product, right? But the, they aren't sitting around their office 24-7 either, right? So these are the same answers here that... Um, I would have got there, and so I can think about, you know, how can I reduce my variable costs, right? And then I can try to increase my uh, revenue over here. Okay. Um, all right. So let's do one here. I want you to pause the video, see if you can do it. Hopefully you didn't cheat there. Uh, so we'll do this one real quick. So giving you the fixed cost here, it's ten dollars. Let's say there's a machine that I need uh, to make this product. This is going to be ten. And all the way down. Okay, then uh, what I want to do, you know, really you might want to have a total cost column, but I'm going to skip that because I really just care about the variable cost. I don't really care about the fixed cost, right? I paid for it, it's gone, it's over. So let's look at a marginal cost. So uh, it's implied that when I produced zero, I'm going to have no variable cost. So the additional cost of that first unit is one one dollar. The additional cost here is two dollars. This is two fifty. Do that thing again. What if I hold my hand up like, a, like this? This is three. We'll see if that happens again. This is five. This is six. Nope, it's not six. Let's see here. Got to 
ahead of myself. This is 550. It's okay to make mistakes. You just gotta fix them, right? Ah, I don't know why that comes up. If you don't, if you know why that comes up, email me. All right, and then this is eight dollars. So we're gonna see which ones we should produce. So we'll sell them for four dollars. How many should I produce? So the first one should I produce it? Yes. It cost me one dollar. I sell it for four. It's a profit of three dollars. Second one uh, cost me two. Sell it for four. I like that one. Oh, they just did it again. Uh, this one's two fifty. Wow, I didn't, something just flying off the end of that. Uh, cost me two fifty and on the margin. I'm gonna sell it for four. I'm gonna make a dollar fifty profit. This cost me three. This one cost me five dollars. I'm not gonna make it. I'm gonna stop right here. And we would say that this is the profit maximization. So profit maximization rules that I'm gonna produce up until the marginal revenue, which in this case is gonna be the price, equals the marginal cost. And that's when I'm gonna stop. Right, so um, I'll leave this last example here in the notes. Uh, I encourage you to do it on your own. See how many they should produce. Right, and generally the answer is not produce as many as they can. Right, could be, but they need to figure that out. Right, so let me show you one last thing here in Excel. I've got a, a widget production schedule here. It's a little different. Uh, it's in it's in hours. Okay, and I've got the cost of labor here as. As six dollars per hour, right? So it's from the good old days, or maybe another country where uh, you know dollars are worth more, or something like that. Doesn't matter. Uh, rent is ten dollars per day. Okay, so I've got labor hours. So how many hours does it take me to make different units, right? So to make two units, it takes one point six labor hours. Right? I either need to have uh, two employees doing 0.8 hours, or one employee working one point six hours. It doesn't matter. That's just the labor input. Okay. So I know that rent is the only uh, fixed cost here. So we know that rent is, is ten dollars, and really what you can do is just click on that. I mean, you can go, you can do this, Control D, and it'll copy down. You should already know that. If you don't, you can do that. Or another trick, you just go to here, you click on this little plus sign there, and it drags it all down for us. Okay. Uh, then we want total variable cost. Well. The variable cost is the labor cost, so it's, we're going to write a formula here. So equals, and it's six because that's, oops, that's, that's what I fingered it there. Uh, six, and then it's going to be times, and the key for times is that uh, asterisk or star thing, times the number of hours, right? So they have paid employees six six dollars an hour times the number of hours they worked, and the first one I get zero, right? So I can I can copy this, I can do Control D, or I can do the faster way. And just copy it all the way down. So what this is is two hours at six dollars an hour should be twelve dollars. It is. It's all right there, right? So let's say I don't know if the minimum wage were to change. Let's say it changes to ten dollars an hour like it did in Arizona. You can just change it right here. You could also attach it to like a uh, price up here or whatever, and, and that would increase it. But I don't really want to do that yet. So let's say that didn't happen. So I'll change it back there. And then for total cost. We're just going to go equals this plus this, and then copy that guy on down. And then for marginal cost, there are no marginal costs for uh, the first unit. Okay, so uh, that doesn't matter. So what we want to do is we want to take see, Excel knows it as a different formula. So we'll take this this first one, we'll subtract the previous one, and it'll calculate our our. Uh, marginal cost. Now this next one, let's see if it works, should be $3.60. So I'm just going to copy the formula down. It's $3.60. It gives me everything. I can see where diminishing marginal returns is so that the goods get cheaper additionally as I produce up until I produce five units. And then once I produce the sixth unit, at the sixth unit we start getting increasing costs. Or after the fifth unit we reach diminishing marginal returns. That's how to do the beginning part in Excel.